Okay, so I'm here with Tom Picard and Carol Van Hemmelreich, I think I've got it right, who collectively is the producer and the writer director for My Father, My King, which is a short drama. Welcome to Fusion, congratulations. Thanks Hello, for Steve. Us. Thank you. So who would like to give me the synopsis? Uh, should I do that? Yeah, do that. Uh, so it's um, basically uh, just like a short story about a um, uh, father, obviously. Yeah. Uh, and he's basically been pushed into a situation where he's gone through a trauma. Yeah. Um, and he's sort of like, instead of accepting reality, he's decided to make a false world. And he's, um, he's pushed himself in this false world of paranoia, trauma, and he's, um, he's running away from reality, really. Um, yeah. But at the, at the heart of it, he, his intentions are positive. They are good. Like, he loves his children. So he's taken his children away from reality and he's trying to save them from his from paranoia really yeah yeah um and basically he um he's he's getting further and further away from reality but um he he gets he gets brought back um from his relative uh, and basically it's um it's bringing him back to reality um but his intentions are purely positive yeah um so it's really looking at the idea of like you read a newspaper and you see someone who's done something bad uh, and you judge them on that, but you have no idea of their story, their backstory. So this is really like trying to understand what he's gone through, the loss of his wife, why he's, why he's taken his children, why he's done this. Is it, is it fair to say it's a road movie? I don't know if that's a fair way to describe it. Yeah, in a way. I mean, he's, he, they are on the road. Yeah. They are always constantly moving um, because, he, he, again, he doesn't really know what he's <coughs> running from. But there is this paranoid sense of like, um, yeah, there is something in the air. There is something he needs to protect his children from. Um, so yeah, he's he's constantly running, but it's reality that he's running away from. Um, and again, it's the, this concept of how far can you, how far can you go where you put the ones you love in danger, but you've still got uh, the best intentions. You're still trying to protect them. Um, so again, someone could read a headline of someone who's. Um, done something and judge them just purely by that headline but if you don't know the reasons yeah you can't really make a full judgment so that's really what made made me write the film and um, yeah look at that story anyway. you mean the kind of people who read the daily mail oops i shouldn't have said uh, it but I'm, no, not, I'm not going that far <laughs> yeah i mean it's, uh, Sorry, I know. it's, it's definitely it's a little uh, dig at the mail there <laughs> it's definitely that that concept uh, you need to really understand someone's full story and their history to make a, a proper, to make a proper yeah, judgment. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I agree. So, the 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 the, the, act, the, the younger actors, in it, the children. Where where did, where did you get that? Where did they come? Where did they come from? How did you come across them? What do you mean? The children, the, the act, the, the younger actors. How did you find the actors? Yeah, yeah. It's interesting because I mean, they're all brilliant in it, but yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. interesting. Well, we we had castings for yeah. the little boy, but the little girl, we worked with her on a previous short film that we casted for. Um, it was another director who was doing a a bit of a fantasy world with a few kids and so her name is Katie and yeah. we were we loved her she's just a brilliant actress and for me it was a clear choice that she she should be on the film with Tom so I introduced them and then for for the little boy yeah we just had we just had castings and and we finally found you so that mm. was that was also a nice nice find mm. so Ka they were, Katie yeah. was the most pro professional oh yeah she was brilliant set. she was well, I, she well, she amazing. just had amazing questions. Like she knew what a film was. Like she studied, and she was just like, she had questions like, "Is it going to be a CU or an ECU?" I don't know. It was just very cute. She didn't from care. She knew what we old. were doing as well as her. And you were like scratching your head, going, "Oh my god!" Yeah, well, no, I was taken aback. It was amazing. But, uh, but again, uh, Jude as well, uh, the young boy. He yeah. was We saw a lot of uh, child actors for the boy, and it was a, it was a hard one because obviously child actors, some a lot of them try very hard. Um, but he just felt like it was coming from a real place. And he was, uh, yeah, we went back and forth a lot, but he, um, it was worth waiting for him because he had another shoot and he had to postpone it for us. And it was, but he was amazing as well. So yeah. They worked well. Too. So when you say try to, that's interesting. I've heard this before. I'm, I'm guessing they're kind of, this obviously applies to adults as well as children, but they overperform for the piece, I guess. Yeah, I mean, um, it's just this, it's the idea of acting without acting. And yeah. I, I mean, I'm, for me, that, that would be um, like amazing to be able to even think about. That. Yeah, yeah, like we're talking, I know what you mean, like exactly as we're talking yeah. now, but to translate but that. To, to do that, like, yeah, if you feel cold in front of a camera, how do you do that instead of going, Ooh. like, and, and, and the, way, the way Jude acted in the castings was just like, 
above and beyond what we were thinking. He'd just like ad lib and try some stuff. And, and I think for a child actor, that's not rare, but it's to do that naturally, I think that's, um, I mean, it would be hard for me, but yeah, I think that's quite a rarity in, in the scope of that age. So Yeah, no, they're all, was, I mean, they're all brilliant, of course. Yeah. So where does this come from? Where, where, what place does it, honestly, I know you well, wrote for it. Again, it's like the actual start of the concept actually came from the location. The actual shack. Yeah. Um, I was just year, three years, probably four years before we did the film. I was just walking. Uh, down oh, so you knew the area? Yeah. Right. It's, okay. da it's down south, so I was just walking with my family along, and then we just came across that along a public footpath, and I was like, "There's definitely a story here." Like it was just a dilapidated shack, been there for years, and uh, so it kind of started from that, uh, almost like what could happen here, and then like making a story. From that, right. and that's the way the concept of like, yeah, if there was a father here with their children, like, what, why would they be here? Um, what brought them here? Um, and obviously, the train tracks are right there as well, so it was a very yeah, it looks really smart. I mean, it's smart. It's the wrong way. It's a really, not, it's a lovely look. Yeah, to film. there was a lot of there was a lot of factors there that made made it almost yeah. There was a story there before I even saw it, so it, um, that was the starting ground, um, and then it came from that really. So. And so, how did you, do you two know each other previously? No, actually, the director that I mentioned earlier, the one who worked with Katie yeah. on the previous film, she's the one who introduced us. So Tom oh. was looking for producers, and um, and so we met um, around the film. So we didn't know each other before. But so yeah. Tom was looking for someone with money, right? Okay, got that. <laughs> Not really, no. <laughs> no, no, I was really joking. No, I'm a friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. friend. Yeah. So, so when you two came, so yeah. were you engaged in this immediately? So yeah, what really got me was the post-apocalyptic beginning of the film. Like I was really drawn to that, and so. It was there from the beginning in in the writing, so we that was what really got me into the story, and and so the, I mean when Tom contacted us, he was nearly done with the versions, like he had a shooting version quite quite mm. like yeah right mm. then, so it was pretty pretty obvious, and it was one of the first film that we produced when we moved in London, because originally we were from Belgium, the other producer and I, right, and so we opened the company here, and Tom I think is the second film that we worked on with the with the company, so yeah. No, and so I think it, it's interesting you sound about post-apocalyptic. Yeah. And I think that's kind of what reminded me of The Road. Yes. You know, yeah. it's, uh, I'm sure, it's no one else said that to you, because it does Oh, no, no, to... definitely. Obviously that was, uh, I mean, obviously that's an inspiration. Yeah. Because um, it was, obviously there is that, there is that presence at the beginning that that could be the story. And yeah. in, in, in his mind, it is, that's his reality. But it was like, how far can we go with this? Um, because that's not reality. It's like, um, again, it's like little hints, like the plane. Like as soon as you see the plane, it's like okay, planes are running. Mm. Humanity is like is all those still around. Yeah. yeah, but it was just how far can we go with that? So, um, so it obviously starts very sort of stark and um, minimal. But I think we gradually like fed reality back in um, yeah. because again, that's kind of kind of the ch children's reality as well. Um, if if you're if the father's sort of like sort of telling you this and um, almost like smothering you with this information. Uh, yeah, that can be their reality as well. Mm. So we didn't want to see anyone up until the uh, police capture scene. Um, and then after that, you'll see everything sort of revealed. Because I just realised, I mean, you're talking about it, um, because of the bleak look that you had spotted a few years before, you couldn't really have written it as a rom-com, I mean, or, or as an example, no, no, but as an example, yeah. because the whole point, or the whole point of it, part of the point of it is a bleak look, yeah. isn't it? and that location is, yeah. Yeah, lends bleak, itself to that. And yeah. we were, because it was like so many years before we filmed, it was like, I went down, I think, a couple of times to make sure it was still there. Oh, God, what yeah. was that? Imagine if it was. Well, it's an amazing there. shack that I've seen at the top of a hill front yeah. enough near me, well, a few miles away. And I keep seeing it, or I used to keep seeing it driving to work. And I kept thinking, oh, God, that would be like a fantastic location for a film. Yeah. But there, there's so many locations out there. It's just this thing of, like, is it, is it feasible? Is it possible? Would you have to pay for that land? And, it, and again, because it was out of London, it was relatively easy, easy to yeah, yeah, film yeah, absolutely. it. So. And right. not, not too many passes by, so it's quite quiet. So, so how did you, I mean, assuming you've got, of course, got uh, permission, but how mm -hmm. did you, how did that happen? How did you go about, was that for you, did you well, have to sort that? Yeah, well, we went around the neighborhood, really. We tried to find, it was, um, we just, yeah, called around the, 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 the village and tried to find who it belonged to, because that shack was just abandoned. Mm -hmm. And it, that was the hardest part, finding out right. who that shack belonged to. And. Um, and then it really didn't belong to anyone. It was more part of the council, and so we just, we, yeah, and it was part of a, it was on a, on a farm land, so we just called the farm, and they were fine with us staying there as well. So we, because we camped there overnight during the shoot as well, so that was just all with the farm that we 
they were fine with us staying there for, for free as well. So that was just like, they were I think cool. It was just letting people know what we're doing and being honest. Exactly, because they were just curious. Um, and, yeah, yeah. 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 People always are, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's funny. I mean, I, I'm going off kilter just very quickly. Like, I've got a drone. And I've noticed whenever I've, I've actually stopped taking out because whenever I take it out, people come around and try and find out, and it yeah. stops me doing what I want to do. Yeah. You know, it happens constantly. I've actually, I'm getting rid of it because it's become not just that, all sorts of reasons, but when I get to fly off enough, but when I do, they just, wherever you are, they yeah. just throng. Yeah. That's what I was expecting, but it didn't seem like that. It was very, because yeah, yeah. we're in London, we're so used to just crowds and whatnot, yeah. but down there, it was just no one, just everyone left, left us yeah. to do what there we did. Cool. So. So can I ask if you don't mind, yeah. I know you said you originally from Belgium, you came to the UK mm -hmm. and opened a production company, and if you don't mind me asking the re reasoning behind that, did you, was it more opportunity or? No, it was just about the English really. I love um, producing or directing films in English, and I think it just there is something with the language, like as well with films in general. And so for us, it was just that decision of making films in English, and it's not a possibility in Belgium because you either speak French or Dutch, so. Right, and has it worked out the way you hoped it would? It, yeah, it's so far so good. It's so far, yeah, it's it's mm. good. Yeah, we've got like so quite a sort of collective of people that we're uh, like the yeah. DP, the director of photography, had worked with Carol and Jan and other projects. So yeah, we're all kind of like in working together like quite a lot of the time. And you can see it's polished. I mean, you you know, obviously we see lots of films, lots of really good films, but you mm. sort of you can see that the polished, but you can tell mm. that there's it's a well-made film, if that kind of makes sense, you know. Yeah, well, I mean... Um, well, it's yeah. got a look to it, I guess. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, then it's been really professionally produced. Yeah, it's just little little things of just going down to the location with the DP before, just because obviously sometimes you don't get that chance. So yeah. That location was everything. Like, yeah, from, yeah I mean, that's there was a lot of prep, so it was... Um, so, yeah, just in regards to, like, the night shoots and whatnot, like, yeah, when can we film that part? How late can we film? And it was... So it was planned to a, to a T, so... Yeah. Uh, and the thing is, sorry, you're going to say... Yeah, I was going to say that the night shoot, what was funny is that there ended up being a storm that night. Oh, right. So that was quite, quite an adventure as well. And um, I don't know if you remember, it was a few years ago, there was like, the, I think it was called the Mother of Storms or something yeah. like that. And it's just like hundreds of lightnings in the sky. That was just unbelievable. And I don't think people trust us when we say that the lightnings in the film are actually true. Like, they're not for yeah. production. How fateful fate is that? It's, yeah, exactly. Well, in, in the day, it was pure sun. Yeah, yeah. and then... Like 11 p.m. The heavens opened up. It was just insane. Like yeah, that was and, uh, it was beautiful. It was. It, it didn't really m mess with our schedule, but no. it was just like it was just amazing that it went from like pure sun to like storms like in the same day. Yeah. Is, uh, so we sort of got everything we ne Wanted, needed yeah. that went beyond what we wanted to. So when you you lock, locked down the film, sorry, go back from there. When the film's finished, you finish shooting it, you you're putting it all together. It's so really it's a question about post, and you want to keep that lovely kind of. Mm, uh, I don't want to say washed out look, but it's got a look, a look to it, right, obviously. Yeah. But that's done in the grading. I mean, how, because I'm assuming you must be part of that grading process. You can sit there and make sure yeah. it looks exactly. So how do you, do you instruct them or do they kind of instruct you? Does that well, make, kind I mean, of make was, sense? I mean, we obviously had a look, we had a look that we were going for before, but within that there's still slight experimentation of how far we want to go with it. Yeah. Um, because I still believe that uh, we could have gone further. But to make um, it even look more what kind of uh, washed out more, or high, more high contrast. Oh, at okay. the moment it's uh, in, in the moment it's washed out. But again, I I didn't want to go too dark because that's not reality. Right. So it's this thing of like, do you show the reality of the protagonist, mm. or do you show the reality of like what's what's actually happening? So it was like that payoff. How far do we go? Um, and again, it's like it's a, it's a bad situation, but it's it's a, it's a beautiful location as well. So it's yeah. like you don't want to crush. Out the beauty of the location that, that's what's mm. interesting about the story yeah um so yeah we were but then obviously when they do get captured there is a there is a finite change to that uh yeah to that contrast now we're in reality this is actually happening so it's um the dreamy that doesn't exist anymore after the capture scene yeah but no there was experimentation but we knew where we were going and again dp was in, involved in the grade as well so so yeah again just just constant talking about that and where we want to go with it so and with the, the, the final with the final cut, I mean, how much was trimmed? I don't know, maybe it started out as a 40 minute film. I'm not entirely sure, of course, but how much was sort of excised, exercised from I the- I think it was- It was pretty close to the script. Like, yeah. it was, I think we always yeah. said like between 10 and 15. Yeah. Obviously we always want to try and make it as short as possible, but I'm terrible at that. So mm. it's like, it's normally around there like 13, 14 minute mark. And this one was just under 15. So. Yeah. And how do you work it? I mean, I don't know if this has happened, 
if your editor says, you know what, I know you really like the scene, but it's got to go because it's not working. Well, that's always the hardest bit. Yeah, Everyone yeah. knows that. But I mean, I'm all, that's why editors are there because they weren't on the set. They don't. I don't know how long that shot took. They're just all they're worried about is the story. Does that serve the story? And I'm, and I'm a massive advocate of that. But there are always situations where you're like, oh, no, yeah. I love this shot. That Please shot took us too long. Yeah. Like, but again, I'm. It's almost like <coughs> stepping back and having that time to just have a look again and actually look at it with uh, honest eyes. And, yeah. And that's when you realise what they're where they're coming from. Because again, again, if it's not serving the story, or if it's a shot that's saying the same thing as another shot doesn't need to be there so otherwise it's just a it's there for beauty and that's not good enough um, so but luckily there wasn't too many of them so. no and, <laughs> and I mean there are a lot of di like different kind of directors and Tom is the, the kind of directors who like he really knows what he wants in the film in the end like everything that we did on set was clear and like there was no much room for like not in a bad way in a good way no, like, no, there was not much room yeah exactly so well. yeah, yeah. and he knew what he wanted he had it in mind and he made it he made that happen as other directors that we work with, they just go and they, they see what's going on like on the moment, and that's another way of working. But um, that was interesting to work with Tom, Tom, because he, sorry, because he has a very, um, very clear idea of what what he wants. So obviously, as a producer, that's that's yeah. nice. Well, because you're going to save time, money, yeah, yeah. grief, on you, I guess. Yeah, and again, that's that's half. It sounds it sounds bad, but that's half the reason why I'm like that because. It's like a little bit of a producer head on me as well because yeah. again time it just disappears you need to know you need to have a template that you've got to film after those two three days or whatnot otherwise it's like yeah i couldn't go in and just sort of like no, it's, all wasted. Just hope it's just it's wasted just isn't it yeah. i mean you know it is like you say it's not just time time will equal money and it's yeah. just and you know if you can hone it down and storyboard or however way however you've done it have a really clear vision it's got to be yeah. that's it thank you very oh, much thank you very thank much, much. Thank you. that's wonderful Thanks. thank you for your time <laughs>